Thessalonians, amen. Thessalonians is where we find the rapture of the church. Hallelujah. The Lord himself shall the seven send from heaven with a... Let's say that together. Everybody say with a... God's coming back shouting. He's coming back for a shouting church. Amen. Can you say praise the Lord? I was born in a shouting church. I pastor a shouting church. I'm going to a shout in heaven. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. And I want to shout with the voice of triumph. Amen. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Amen. And uh, we're going to look at a little bit of expository preaching. That means a little verse by verse, but we're going to, going to look at some things that God wants us to give ear to. Amen. Now, uh, we've got to understand this. Man, Paul is closing this letter. Hallelujah. And he's wanting to give them something until he can return or send another exhortation by letter or presence. And so, amen. These final closing words I have found in each letter are important because it's like their last appeal. Amen. Uh, Paul, hallelujah, uh, wanted, he was a revivalist. Amen. In other words, he wanted to see the church grow. Amen. And when we live in a world, amen, the devil has made, amen, the world exciting for them. But it's not like our excitement. It's shallow. This is real. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The victories of this world are shallow. Can I have an amen? I know they're shallow. Hallelujah. First Thessalonians 5, verse number 12. Amen. We beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and over you in the Lord and admonish you. That's your pastor. To esteem them very highly in love. I didn't write this. I'm just preaching this. To esteem them very highly in love, hallelujah, for their work's sake, and be at peace among yourself. The opposite of peace is war. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, we need, amen, the prince of peace among us. The Bible says, now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly. Comfort the feeble-minded. Support the weak. Be patient toward all. Men is italicized. Amen. That means men, women, children. Hallelujah. But the devil. Don't give place to him. Don't be patient toward him. Get rid of him. ASAP. See that none render evil for evil unto any man. But ever follow that which is good. Both among yourselves and to all. Rejoice evermore. God's on target here. Rejoice evermore. Pray when you feel like it. Pray when you're in trouble. Pray when your back's to the wall only. Amen. You need to talk to God in good, bad, pleasant, ugly. Pray without ceasing. Get tapped in, stay plugged in. Amen. Hallelujah. In everything, murmur and complain and stand still and just let God take care of everything. No. In everything, give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. There's a will of God that is in Christ Jesus. And he's given that will and mind to us. Hallelujah. Concerning us. And that's to pray without ceasing. Hallelujah. Amen. To amen, give thanks in everything. Verse 19, quench not the spirit. Don't sit out on God. When God talks to you, don't shove him away. You're not big enough to shove him away. I'm trying to be kind here. Come on. You don't want to shove him away. Quench not the spirit. Amen. You can't, you can't put the fire of God out anyway. Amen. We need to fall on this rock and be broken or this rock will fall upon us and grind us to powder. Come on. God said that. Come on. We need to see the real Jesus. 
How many want the word Jesus instead of the smooth silver tongue orator that many people are? Come on, somebody. That don't give you the whole counsel. That don't show you, amen, beholding the goodness and severity of God. God's a good God, but he's got a side that you don't want to push and get ugly with with your sin. With your rebellion. With you just sitting there. How many love him? How many want, how many want God to challenge you? Come on. How many, how many want God to make you? Amen. How many believe we've got to yield to the Spirit of God? Amen. Followed by this despise not prophesying. Don't despise the preacher preaching to you right now. Oh, come on. God's hitting on everything we've already had in the church. Come on. Amen. Bible says, prove all things, hold fast that which is good. Abstain. For if it looks like a snake, kill it. If it acts like a snake, kill it. If it has the appearance of evil, stay away from it. Abstain. Total abstinence from anything that looks ungodly, that looks worldly, that looks... That looks like it's going to make you more carnal than spiritual. Make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Come on, somebody. We need to start pleasing God. In the world, you're out there fornicating. You try to please the flesh. You have some smooth-talking chick or some, amen, guy that, amen, they know flattering words. They know just what to say to get you in trouble. Well, let me tell you, I know what to say to get you out of trouble. Come on, put your hands together. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Hallelujah. Amen. But I say, if it looks like it's evil, abstain from it. Amen. Hallelujah. And the very God of peace sanctify or separate you wholly. That means completely. And I pray, God, your whole, and this is, this is the complete us, you, your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. Brethren, pray for us. Greet all the brethren with a holy kiss. If you're married, give your wife a holy kiss. Shake my hand. I'm not asking to disobey the word of God, but hallelujah. Amen. And I charge you by the Lord that this epistle be read unto all the holy brethren. So his final remark was, you make sure everybody reads this. You make sure the pastor preaches this. Come on. He said, I charge thee. Those, those words are a heavenly charge. Just like when, amen, hallelujah. Uh, Paul said, preach the word. I charge thee there before God. Even the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the living and the dead, is appearing. Preach the word. The charge was to preach the word. Amen. Hallelujah. And this word still saves us. Can you say praise God? Amen, amen. Hallelujah. And we are going to, going to preach this, but I want to take your focus to the 21st verse. Prove all things and keep that or hold fast that which is good. If it ain't good, get rid of it. If it don't work, get rid of it. But prove all things. Before you get hyped up on something, make sure it works. Make sure God's pleased with it. Make sure it agrees with Scripture. Just because two or three agree on something... God's got to be there agreeing with it. And but God said they're not going to be together. Strength doesn't come by numbers. Strength comes to one God. And I want to be joined together with him. So we're going to look at this this morning. I want to help you. I want you to let your guard down. I want you to get that scowl off of your face. I want you to put a smile on your face. And I want you to say, my pastor wants to help the church. God has given him this message. Hallelujah. And he wants, a, amen, you to be happy. 
with his word because it still works. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. I'll tell you this before I sit down. Hallelujah. I had me a good running little car. Had a Mitsubishi engine, which was one of the World War II fighter engine. I mean, that thing would honk. And I had, amen, had a neighbor. Hallelujah. And he wanted to try to fix the car. And when he got done, hallelujah, it never did run the same. Amen. Because if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But he's an old alcoholic and mechanic, and he was just looking for something to do. Come on, somebody. Don't let everybody get into your business. Come on. I said, don't let, don't let everybody get into your, your space. Come on. But you need to let God in that space. You need to let God in your, come on, with all your gifts. He wants to give us some understanding. Hallelujah. And God's not going to give you something that will fail. He's going to give us things that work. And so we're going to look at things proven, things that, that work. Hallelujah. Amen. Will you help me preach? And how many will help yourself to a worthy portion? Come on. How many, how many want to walk away from, amen, trouble and past and things that have, have, have proven that they depress you? Amen. Hallelujah. And let's walk in the glory path in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's clap our hands to the Lord Jesus. Let's lift our voice. Come on. Hallelujah. This is Sunday morning. This is the first day of the week. It's not Monday. Hallelujah. Amen. This is the day that Pentecost was poured out. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. God is a good God. Hallelujah. Amen. And God richly bless you this evening and or this morning you may be seated hallelujah now amen in in our text this morning we we read amen paul's closing remarks as i have said hallelujah amen and it is important to understand that paul by the time of this letter had been filled with the holy ghost the church really was amen a new entity upon earth it had only been here a few decades. We're into 2,000 years of the church and things that still work. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And I've got, amen, there's always, amen, going to be something new out in the tool market or some new gadget, hallelujah, that you can stick in your ear, you can put over your face and do the computer thing. There's always going to be some shot the government wants to get you that's not proven. And I can remember God telling me, hallelujah, amen, don't take the jab. <laughs> because they were trying to put things in people that had not been approved. You've got to understand, federal, amen, law, the FDA requires so long of a period of time for that drug to be proven. First, on animals. And you'd rather have somebody try it on a monkey or a guinea pig than even your worst enemy. Amen. Because if they're not proven, then there is going to be some very undesirable results for things that are not proven. But people were looking and they were believing the government of the United States and of the world. And many even had job threat. Many had, come on, somebody. Don't say, we're not too far removed from that. Come on. They didn't want kids to go to school. They wanted isolation. They wanted to close the church doors. That lets me know there's a spirit behind all of that. When God said, gather yourselves together and so much the more as you see the day approaching and you find a spirit, hallelujah, that opposes that, you, it doesn't take, amen, eight years in seminar and theology to figure out that isn't God's spirit because, it does, because church still works. 
coming to the house of God. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Amen. And so, amen, truth will prevail. Amen. Everybody say truth will prevail. And so, amen, there are things that we've got to understand. Amen. Hallelujah. And these are pharmaceutical things. And, and uh, uh, amen, you're, if I can just leave this with you, amen, trust God more than you do pills. Trust God more than, amen, pills that only treat the symptoms but don't get rid of the problem. Come on, somebody. You, did, did you know you can take an ibuprofen, make your headache go away, but there can be a deeper problem of pain there that, amen, that pill only masks it. That's what drinking alcohol on Saturday night does. It masks your problems. But you wake up with the same problem. It gives a little bit of relief, but the next morning, hallelujah, you're out, you're out money, you're out with a headache. Come on. I even had a man that came. He was a visitor to church. Everybody smile at me. Makes me feel better. <laughs> Increases your face value. Man, he came out to, to church, and he had been drinking on Saturday night. And, boy, he was holding his head. Because I've been there. Come on, somebody. I said, I've been there. And, boy, while you're on it. Flying high. I mean, you can drive better. You can dance better. Come on. It's called block and tackle whiskey because you can walk a block and think you can tackle anything. But when you come down from that, when that masks re. And your friend comes up to you and says, you know who you started to fight? No idea, man. He says, come on. You know where your car is this morning? Where's it at? It's down in the river, man. How many want some real preaching this morning? We've tried that junk, and it doesn't work. It didn't work on me. It don't, come on, it ain't going to work. It's not a fix to the eternal problem. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Jesus is the real fixer. I said, these things work that we're going to talk about here. Amen. Now, hallelujah. Let's, let's look at this. Amen. Even David, and you can find this in the book of Samuel, and many are familiar with this. So, hallelujah. Saul didn't want to go out and fight David. I mean, he had the helmet. He had the sword. Amen. And he told David, here, put these things on. That had been killing lions and bears. If you don't think our spiritual genealogy, amen. Some people, amen, they're pretty bold about that lion at the zoo as long as there's a fence between cat, you ain't going to get to me. And I mean, you could say, your mama wears army boot, whatever. <laughs> but you throw them on the other side of that fence. Come on, somebody. And I don't believe David went looking for those things. The lion and bear came looking, not for David, but for the sheep. And the sheep didn't have any protector except for David. The church still needs a pastor. Come on, somebody. I said that you... Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so he had killed a lion and a bear with a slingshot. That's learning how to place stones in the right place. Come on, somebody. There are weapons. Amen. That are old, that still work. The slingshot still works. I'm telling you, it works. And let me tell you what, hallelujah. If we got invaded by a foreign army, hallelujah, 
it'd be better to have some silent singing. I've got a bow that I can split arrows with. And you won't even hear it. So David, when he was bringing these down, he didn't set up a lemonade stand with the bear skin out there. Come on, come on, look what I did. He said, hey, it's just part of the job, keeping these things from eating the sheep. Come on, somebody. Are you with me here? Hallelujah. Satan loves to eat lambs. He loves to separate lambs from the flock. Get... Amen. Hallelujah. And there's some places in town that call them churches. Hallelujah. And it's like the fox. Amen. Guarding the hen house. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Amen. Someone that loves you, amen, says preach the truth in love. Now, there are things that, that don't work. Just accepting the Lord as your personal Savior just doesn't work. You can say that all day long. And, you know, we're in, a, we're in a world that thinks you can say things. and I mean, hallelujah. People changing their identity. Amen. I'm a penguin. My little granddaughter, hallelujah, amen, she had a little princess dress on and she took it off and she told daddy, said, said I'm not a princess anymore. And daddy said, you're always going to be a princess in my sight. She goes, but I'm not a princess anymore. She goes, but I'm a dinosaur. You know, now clothes can make a difference in how you feel and how people treat you. Come on. But hallelujah, amen. God wants to put a robe on us, hallelujah, that's going to last forever. Now, we're going to get to that in a minute. But amen, just because you say it doesn't mean, hallelujah, amen. Just because a boy says I'm a girl doesn't mean he's a girl. God don't agree with that. I'm going to say this again till it sinks in. There's only two genders. All right? You're in a church, hallelujah, where there's a male. God created male and female. And if you're a man, act like a man. Live for God like a man. If you're a lady, don't let the world take the feminism out of you. Don't let them exploit you, use you, and abuse you just as some fleshly little piece of pleasure. Hallelujah. Amen. Get your... Get your life back in order with the Word of God. Amen. And so, hallelujah. Here's, here's David, meanwhile, back at the ranch. Saul's tent. Amen. He says, try these on, and can you see this guy? Hallelujah. Amen. Is that your coat, brother? Amen. David, come here, brother. Brother David, come here. Brother Messiah, come here. Come here, David. He was God, then he was the water cooler, now he's David this morning. <laughs> you see his jacket, brother? You see his jacket? <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, put that on. This is Saul's armor. Okay, even if you go to Goodwill, don't buy this jacket. <laughs> if it don't fit you, if it don't fit, you're not comfortable with it, there's a reason. In Saul's armor, he what? I've never proven it. Because... 
them lions and bears, they didn't care, amen, what I really looked like. They didn't want that stone coming my way. Come on, somebody. He took, amen, the lion by the beard. They say if your nose gets punched, your enemy's close. If you get punched in the nose, the enemy's close. <laughs> hey, what was that? You know what that was. Come on now. And we do need to distance ourselves from the enemy. We need to distance ourselves from things we know are evil and that want to take us down, that have got real things. Come on. That have got real poison. Come on, somebody. Satan doesn't rely on speed as a serpent. He relies on you being at the wrong place at the right time. Don't go around people and places of temptation. Hallelujah. Separation from ungodliness and all appearance of evil still works. I said it still works. You don't have to prove amen, how tough you are. God, hallelujah. Now, how many believe he looks better in his jacket than this? Amen. Brother James looks good in that jacket, but you don't, man. You step on something? Amen. This can go around you. <laughs> Triple breasted. I mean, it, amen. Hallelujah. You can make part of that out of your next to kin. So, are you with me here? How many see that? There's going to be some things. Haven't been proven. People are going to say, here, try this pill. And I could get on that all morning long, but I'm not going to. Amen. But those things we know don't work. I said they just don't work. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, amen. He goes, I haven't proven these things. Amen. And so we know the story. He goes out with his sling. He removes all of the things that were not proven. Amen. Hallelujah. And, amen, he goes out there. Hallelujah. And he's got his shepherd's staff. And, amen, Goliath is saying, amen, what am I, a dog? You come to me with a stick? Come on. He said, I'm going to feed you to the fowls of the air. Come on. He, he started making his brag. Come on, somebody. Let me just tell you some things about, amen, battle. Always attack. Don't talk big. Amen. There are some guys that want to tell just how tough they are. And right in the middle of them telling, you just need to poke them in the nose. Especially if it looks like the devil. Now, you're saying, are you preaching violence? No, but I'm saying, hallelujah. Amen. Some people only stand. Man, you couldn't sit there and preach a Bible study to Goliath. He was there to kill. All right. How many understand the battle set? The devil is out not just to wound you. He's out to kill you. He wants to take you to a devil's hell. So you got to get some fight in you. You got to say, if it's going to be me or him, it's going to be you, boy. And not everything is going to bring Goliath down. But he said, I have not proven these things. We know the story. Hallelujah. Amen. He ran out there. Hallelujah. Amen. And he sunk a stone in that dude's forehead. Hallelujah. And he went down on the ground. And then David used the the weapons of his enemy against his enemy. Amen. The things that were going to destroy him. The things that the devil had confidence in. Hallelujah. He took, amen, the enemy's own sword. Cut off that dude's head. Why? Because he didn't need to be boasting against the army of Israel and the God of Israel. Come on, somebody. He didn't go for the arm. 
I don't ever want you swinging a sword again. He, he went for the real stuff. Come on, somebody. And so, so, amen, story being told, hallelujah, we, we know, and he took that, and he went to Jerusalem, a city that had not been conquered, hallelujah, by Abraham or any of the predecessors, hallelujah, and he threw that down, amen, in the statement that I'm going to come back, hallelujah, and it was David that took the city of Jerusalem. This is one of the reasons and many of the reasons why he was a man after God's own heart. He wasn't fighting, hallelujah, just for his own self. He said, if, if I lose this battle, there's going to be a lot of Israelites affected. Hallelujah. You need to look at it that way in the next time of temptation. Hallelujah. If Satan brings me down, it's going to affect people I'm bringing to church. It's going to affect, hallelujah, some saint in there. It's going to affect my children. It's going to affect others. Hallelujah. No man lives to himself. Come on. How many understand this? Rule of battle. How many big sin affects other people? Come on. Hallelujah. Amen. Just one sin has affected the whole world and filled our jails and mental institutions and graveyards. Can you say amen? And so my point is this. Hallelujah. He did not feel comfortable. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. With what he had. And it, it's perhaps good. And he used it later. When you look at David later, he did use the sword. Amen. He did use the shield. He, he spake about it in his songs. Hallelujah. Amen. But at that time, he was really a one-weapon man. That and the staff. Hallelujah. Because the staff, hallelujah, is a weapon. Amen. I'm not going to go into that, not to give you any idea. So, this is important to understand there are going to be things that work for you and that will work for everybody. And there are some things that will only work for certain people. Okay? Amen. This is why, hallelujah, I believe even God healed people different ways because God has got a lot of different ways he can do it. He can spit on the ground, make an eyeball, Put it in there and tell you to wash. Or he can just touch your eyes and heal. He can speak the word and devils go out. Hallelujah. He can touch the leper, which was forbidden to touch any unclean. But he was the high priest and could pronounce because as soon as he touched him, he was clean. Things that are not as though they were. Hallelujah. And so in the realm, I want you to listen carefully. In the realm of healing, God will operate in a lot of different ways. Because, hallelujah, somebody can be healed, hallelujah, by the anointing, hallelujah, of oil. And asking for the elders to pray over them. You can also get a healing, hallelujah, just sitting in your pew and saying, God, if God tells you if you'll worship right now, I'll heal you. Or if you run the aisles, I'll heal you. Or if you'll dance and shout right now, I'll give you. Come on. There's a lot of versatility in those things. But when it comes, hallelujah, to soul cleansing, there's only one remedy, only one way, hallelujah. And that's the blood of Jesus. Everyone, I mean, baptism in Jesus' name still works. I said it still works. And if it ain't broke, we, we need... Well, praise the Lord. I'm getting ahead of myself, but... Y'all are with me, so just follow. Amen. Amen. So we've got to understand there are some things that are going to work for everybody. Hello? Did it work? What is, was it the answer of a good cause? Come on. Hallelujah. Now, amen. So we need witnesses in the house of what works. they still put out the Reader's Digest. But Reader's Digest is made possible through the medical world, I think. Through advertising. And they'll have these drugs out there, and it'll show the side effects. They say, do you have trouble with arthritis? 
try this Olympia Zekador. <laughs> It'll make you feel like a triathlon. <laughs> Whatever. Okay? And uh, they'll even have people jumping and people are going to start taking them. So I can't do that. But Father Barrett, actors, not people sold up with the stuff. But if you ever notice, and I want you just to notice this, there is this real long, sometimes you've got to flip a page of the side effects. Dizziness, vomiting. And they don't want you to read that. But that's not in bold letters. That's not with the splash of advertising. It's here. Take this. This will work. Well, what's it going to do to me? Don't worry. We're looking for people that aren't as smart as you, okay? We're looking for people that will just do it without asking any questions. I want people to ask questions about salvation. I want them to understand, hey, there ain't no sign. God doesn't add any sorrow to this good stuff. Come on, somebody. There are some people that the cure is worse than the problem. Some of these, I'll just tell you, even something like ibuprofen can eat your guts out. Amen. Can turn your liver white. You don't have to drink alcohol at all. Just use it every night to put yourself to sleep. Doctor will say, you got a white liver. Your blood count is almost at zero at, in the white count. Come on. Are you a drinker? No. You take any? Yeah, I take, I take Tylenol. This is why even these people have got, and they set aside they set aside literally billions of dollars from their profits to cover the lawsuits that are going to come against them. Are you hearing me? They know they're going to make billions before the side effects actually start coming in and the plaintiffs come in and the class action lawsuit. Come on. You know what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Even though the government approves it or FDA approves it doesn't mean it's really good. Yes, it'll take care of some symptoms. Hallelujah. But you're to do it and get off of it. This, you got to get in it and you got to stay in it if you want it to work. You got to get in the church and stay in the church. This ain't some ibuprofen church. That, amen. After God fixes you, you just go out and become whatever. All right? Bye. Hold up your hand if you're listening to the pastor. Come on. Hey, pastor, I'm going to court. Can you come with me? I said, sure. I mean, people have been coming to church for like two weeks, and they want somebody in their corner. And then I never see him again. You know, God's coming for somebody, faith. Somebody that believes him. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And so in, in this letter, and we're going to look at these things. Hallelujah. Amen. Do a little bit of expository, but there are things that have always worked and will work forever. Amen. I've got tools that work. I used to have Black and Decker. Nothing wrong with Black and Decker, but batteries go down on them. It's B, Black and Decker. There ought to be an A in between the B and D. <laughs> because you, they're good, amen, to put together some little toy in your house. But if you're going to build a building and you want battery time and you want something that will break your wrist and almost throw you off, 
get a 20 or 24 volt lithium. You'll just think you're strong when that thing just snaps. Because there's power tools, then there's power tools. And there's some I'm not going to give up because I know they work and they've got more power than other things that have been in my... Come on, somebody. If I don't have anything, I'll use an old-fashioned screwdriver and, and use this old elbow grease. And if I don't have enough elbow grease, I'm going to shoot my elbows with a little WD-40. In. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Amen. And so, amen, certain things are going to work. God wants to give us power tools in the church to put life together, to put the church together, to put things, loose pieces in your mind, questions, hallelujah. God wants to help you this morning. I believe God wants to help us this morning. So, amen, we're going to look at these things. How many, how many are still following here? Please help us this morning, Jesus. Now, hallelujah. So, let's look at this. Amen. Hallelujah. It says, warn them that are unruly. That means warn them that don't like rules. That's how God interpreted that this morning. Because we live in a world that doesn't like rules. It says, warn them. They don't they get our rules out there. Well, I mean, you know, they don't even know you. Seemingly. Out there. Well, it's quiet in here. And you know what it's done? It's emboldened people to do more and more evil. You're going to see more people running stop signs, more. You're going to see more lawlessness if they stand up. I'm warning you. Amen. Don't take it personally. It's because people are getting more and because iniquity, lawlessness shall abound. The love of many shall wax cold. Hallelujah. Amen. They're seeing the judicial sin. I'm showing the problem is, hallelujah. Amen. Because sentence is not executed speedily upon man. It is therefore set in the heart of men to do evil. Hallelujah. Because they don't get a swift sentence on it. It's set in their heart. If I got by with this, then I'm going to try this. And I'm going to try this. And I'm going to try this. Come on. That's why people can have rap sheets the long length of my arm before somebody says, hey, this is enough. Come on, it's happening in the... I'm telling you, it's happening in Garden City. And it is, it is a world, hallelujah, amen, that is demon-possessed. Satan wants to destroy people's lives. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You don't have to steal. You can work for what you got. Let him that stole steal no more. Come on, work still works. Stay with me here. So, warn them that are unruly. Amen. Hallelujah. Laws are there for a purpose. Come on. It'd be terrible, hallelujah, if you decided to speed in an area where there was a school zone and you killed one of your own children. I'm not talking about just some nameless school child. We don't have anything marked out here in the parking lot, but I pray, please drive slow, because we got older people, and we got children that'll, amen, squeeze out of the hand of their parent and run and see a friend across there. Come on, somebody. So conscience works better than postings of signs. You ought to have something on the inside of you that works. You need to have a conviction. Come on. Hey, I love people more than getting my car here, right? We're, we're, we're used. But warn them that are unruly. Amen. The law is for the lawless, for the disobedient, for the manslayer, and so forth. Hallelujah. The law is holy. Amen. But, amen, the law is for the lawless because, let me tell you, when God puts his laws on the inside of you, hallelujah, amen, that's where it will work. I will put my laws into their heart, and in their minds will I write them. That's when God fills you with the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost still works. It is the answer of power to humanity. 
It's the answer to an unruly lifestyle. I got to get up here because I got to see everybody. And I can see everybody. But how many don't like you telling people telling you what to do? Be honest. Are you wrong? Never. <laughs> Lord, it's just hard to be humble when you're perfect in every way. <laughs> During the preaching. Did you get that out? I hope Brother Smith got that. Lydia, was that ever for you right there? <laughs> Brother Aguilar, is he ever preaching to you now? <laughs> Come on. There are people in church that that's good for you and that'll work for you, but I don't need it. The Holy Ghost is for everyone. Rules are for everyone. They protect you. They protect society. I'm not here to preach on this, but we need to warn them that are unruly. Hallelujah. Amen. And we need to let certain rules and laws, amen, hallelujah, come into our life because they will protect us. Amen. Amen. Let me ask you another question. How many have ever went 105 miles an hour in your car? Truck, all right. Cameron's taking this thing. Amen. How many understand what can happen to a tire? You know why they have it going 55 miles an hour in service? Because they know cars better than you. Oh, man, I'm AJ. Boy. Or who's that other guy here? Yeah, that one too. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, them guys don't drive their cars like they do on the track. Does anybody see somebody on the track and go, I can do that? <laughs> and when them cars fit and everything, and them guys walk out alive, it leaves a false sense of security in people like, but yours don't have roll bars. And after you ate your Wheaties, you didn't put on a crash helmet. And you didn't have a triple point harness keeping you in the seat. So what you see isn't what you get. I had a friend named Alan. And this guy, he got inspiration off of the Dukes of Hazard. And the Dukes of Hazards, they got into these cars that are worth half a million dollars. Now. Anyway. I don't want that. Now. But he got inspired. And that guy, every time, <coughs> every time he saw a dip in the road, he would speed up. And he'd try to grab air. He'd go, just right before it happened, I mean, you'd be sitting there looking, he'd go, hang on. <laughs> and you'd hear the scrape, and you'd see sparks, and you'd see, <laughs> you'd see mailboxes that were down here, up here. <laughs> Come on. And then it pound. He'd go, wasn't that fun? After I hit the dash and the top of the car, come on. <laughs> Amen. And I don't know if he ever grew up. I don't know if Al ever grew up. Amen. I don't know. You. But, amen. When, when he asked me for a ride, I said, no, thanks. 
It really inspired me to keep my car running and to never let him drive it. <laughs> That's why you got to be careful of cars you buy that were owned by this grandma, 83 years old, and she only went to Walmart and back. Not. When you see 37 cigarette and cigar burns in the... That wasn't grandma that did that. <laughs> when you see dog and cat... Come on, somebody. I've seen people drive around with kennels. Big old heads. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Amen. Now, hallelujah. My God, where, how did I get onto this? Amen. But... There are some things that just don't work. I may have been around some places and people, but I'm going to kill them. And you made up your mind. I don't care how much fun he thinks it. I was going to help him take care of it. You know what? Amen. I was going to do when five guys piled out of that car. I was going to run. <laughs> I have had five guys fall out of the car, and I'm glad to be alive. I only got hit once. But that don't mean it's going to happen every time. I said, don't do that, Isaac. Oh, this is fun. I said, if your mama knew, oh, she don't care about you. Violating every kind of law you could think of. Amen. Getting into neighborhoods, turning around in yards, and just come up with crazy stuff to get away from person. And that was fun. And that was just on Friday night. Now, how many, how many come to a conclusion that there are some things that just aren't advantageous to a long, healthy lifestyle? My point. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Amen. Violating every kind of rule, everything. Amen. Hurting people's property. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. Making people mad. Come on. I say, warn them that are unruly. Amen. Praise God. And no matter how much I talked to Heiser or Alan, it didn't change them a bit. How many got friends like, or used to have friends like that? Man, I know it's getting quiet here. Come on. Come on, somebody. You talk to them till the blue in the face, and oh, I'll never get caught. I'm just going to do it smarter. Come on, somebody. Amen. So, amen, the Bible says comfort the feeble or the weak-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all. Why? Because God had patience toward us. This still works, amen. In the building of people, people have got to take a close look at themselves and realize my life ain't working. My life has fallen apart. These things that are supposed to make me happy and give me a thrill, hallelujah, are scaring me to death because I'm not ready to die. Are you, are you with me here? Amen. Amen. The Bible says, See that none render evil for evil. Amen. Hallelujah. Why? Because, hallelujah, no matter how bad somebody treats you, if you do good to them that hate you, that still works. By say, these things still work. Why? Because they're not your way. Did you ever figure that out? I'm glad that God doesn't always agree with certain people because he's smarter than them. Come on. How many have ever had God disagree? No, don't do it that way. Don't retaliate. Amen. 
Bring him some cookies instead of beating their head in. Don't give evil. You don't want their head. Come on. Give him a Starbucks card. Whatever. Whatever. Hello? AutoZone card. I don't care. <laughs> but how many have ever, amen, had your old ways try to rise up? And you have proven to yourself that evil for evil does not work. When somebody starts fighting with you verbally, don't fight verbally back. Hold your peace. Can you all do that? Hold your hand. Some people got to put their tongue on an altar. People, some people not. People hold the hands, but feet. No, let's start with your tongue. Because that is the part of the body that the most evil comes from. And Jesus said that. So, how many believe this is why God has the answer, the right answers? How many want things that work? So, let's look at this. Are you still with me here? Amen. Hallelujah. Ever follow or forever follow that which is good both among yourselves and to all men. Verse 16. Rejoice evermore. Worship still works. I don't feel like worshiping. My, come on. It doesn't matter what you feel like. That doesn't change the word. Come on, somebody. I don't feel like worship. How many have ever not felt like worshiping? Come on, where your flesh doesn't get the last word, God's eternal word takes over. Hallelujah. And you say, come on, we need to learn to start fighting back with the word of God. Hallelujah. And the devil said, just sit there. You need to shout, rejoice evermore. Give praise in everything. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. You can change the atmosphere in your life by keeping this, this still works. Hallelujah. When you feel depression get around you, start singing. Start, come on. Compass yourself with songs of deliverance. Hallelujah. Worship is a weapon that still works. God used it. The church is going to use it. Amen. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find that Satan doesn't like He, Amen. He loves it when people complain Murmuring. Hello? Find somebody to have a pity party with. Poor, come on, those people can't help you. They got more troubles than you do. How many have ever poured out on somebody and they're going, oh, yeah, <laughs> the longer you talk, <laughs> because they can't handle it, but God can. Cast all your care on Him. Come on. Rejoice in the good times. Rejoice in the bad times. Rejoice on the mountain. Rejoice in the valley. Rejoice when you're ill. Rejoice when you're feeling great. Rejoice when you're eating bologna. And rejoice when you're eating steak. Rejoice when you're eating, hallelujah, tortillas without beans. And rejoice when you're eating just tortillas. Oh, good news. Thank God when you're eating macaroni and cheese. And thank God when you're eating macaroni and cheese with a can of chicken in it. That's my right. Come on, somebody. Come on, some. And potatoes ain't expensive. You open their, their, their pantry and they got 47 boxes of mac and cheese because it was on sale for 30 cents a box. And let's not forget Raymond noodles, man. That's why everybody in college got to have a microwave. Everybody that's single got to have a microwave. Water and noodles and ooh, voila. 
Come on, somebody. Pray over ramen noodles and thank God for it just like you do a T-bone steak. I ain't going to worship unless I got. Come on. Hallelujah. Amen. God's a good God. And we've tasted and seen the Lord is good. He satisfies our mouth with good things. Amen. Now, that's part of rejoicing. Somebody say rejoicing. Somebody say evermore. So when we got in the church and we started praising God, how many got the Holy Ghost praising God? All right. I've never seen anybody get the Holy Ghost like thank God. <laughs> when Jesus saw their faith, when I see people yawn. I'm looking for somebody that's got faith. This is pastoring here this morning, all right? I'm going to thank God for a pastor. I'm going to... Everybody say rejoice evermore. rejoice evermore. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. In the world, sometimes you'd only dance when the music was playing and you were half drunk. We can dance when the music ain't playing, when we don't have an organ, we don't have drum. We, don't. we can praise God anywhere we're at. If your attitude and life gets right, with, if you can start seeing, God is making me in this. God is going to make me more faithful. God is going to strengthen me through this spiritual resistance. He'll give you an understanding that will turn into praise. Come on. Things in your life, hallelujah, are created by God to create praise and worship in your life. You're not going to be strong without resistance. Some people say, I don't want any problems. You need problems. Can I tell you? You even need a devil because without the devil, I... you, need, you need resistance. That's why the Bible says, resist the devil. When he shows that you, and he knows that you know you've got greater power now inside of you, he's going to flee from you. Resistance still works. And one of the ways of fighting back and resisting depression is through worship. I'm going to praise God. His praise shall continually, continually rejoice evermore. Clap our hands to the Lord. Pray without ceasing. Prayer still works. Prayer and fasting still works. Prayer and fasting gets rid of devil. This kind go about it. Come on, somebody. Everything that I've got in the kingdom of God, it comes through prayer. It comes through asking. It comes through seeking. It comes through knocking. It comes through patience and waiting on the answer to come from God. Be patient toward all men, but be patient toward God. People create situations in life. They expect God to just But I say praise the Lord. Praise the Some things God is going to do for you in fasting. You've got to be patient toward people and toward God. But I say toward God. And your patience possesses your souls. So in everything give thanks, this is the will of God. But I say it's the will of God to rejoice evermore. To quench not the spirit. Amen. Don't let your rebellious nature... Or pride. Pride destroys people. Worship saves people. You ask yourself, amen, how much pride has done for your life. Pride makes you think you deserve a better wife, a better husband, 
a better job. Come on. Even though you're not working full um, for the job you work. Come on. Pride. Come on, somebody. Pride will make you look cool, calm, and collected. We need some Davids that will dance before God. Come on. We need some people that will live for God with all their heart. Inside the house of God. Outside the house of God. You're seeing him praise God out there. You're seeing him praise because they've got a God that does not change. And they have found things that are proven that work. You can be seated. I say quench not the spirit. When you hear word preaching, hallelujah, what should you do? Let's all get the right answers here. Despise not prophesying is the man. Why does he put those back to back? Because, hallelujah, people, amen. Well, if he knew what I was going through, I don't know what you're going through, but God does. And these are answers that work. Come on, somebody. If I just had a better husband. I'm on it right here. Yeah, but you. People have been praying this, and God's saying, I, I know your heart. Saying, oh God, if I just had a better, if I just had a, come on, somebody. You can go through anything. You can go through a good marriage, a bad marriage. You can go through a good situation to work, a bad situation. These still work. Is your marriage an unbeliever? Hallelujah. You're married to an unbeliever. You knew they were an unbeliever when you married them. I'll change them. God, anybody? If God don't change is what you're going to get. And people say, oh man, I, you don't know what I'm getting. You're blind. <laughs> Let me straighten my tie. So you have to Despise not prophesying. When the preacher gets down and he says certain things, don't say, oh, he's just a man. Come on. So, quench not the spirit. Everybody say, don't quench the spirit. I mean, really, that's a sin. To quench. Amen. When God tells you to shut, you do. Now, how many believe it's the pastor's job to watch people? And observe whether they're obeying God's word or not obeying God's word. If they obey God's word, I don't have a problem. But if they don't, because that's what a seer's job is. Paul said, when I beheld your devotion. He even saw sinners, and he said, you're, you're zealous, but you're superstitious about it. Come on. But one thing he learned about Athens, hallelujah, is I don't need to swap philosophies with people. I need to preach the Word of God, and we need a demonstration and power of the Holy Ghost. God still chose preaching. Preaching still works. God chose preaching. He did not unchoose preaching. God chose preaching. Don't quench the spirit. God chose preaching. Preach me out of my trial. Preach me into an altar. Preach me into a battle. Preach me out of my ideals and my foolishness. Before I make a foolish mistake, let a preacher stand. Warn, hallelujah, my unruly heart. You can be seated. I'm going to close. Amen. Everybody say despise. Everybody say all of these things work. I got to get you on my side because I'm on the wrong side, okay? These things work. Rebellion doesn't work. Fighting against God has never worked. Opposing Scripture has never worked. The devil hates preaching, and he hates apostolic preaching. Amen. Hallelujah. And there is a spirit 
behind despising preaching. We need preaching. We need preaching for dry bones. We need preaching for this end time. We need preaching to clear the air on righteousness and genderism. We need preaching, hallelujah, on salvation and what it takes to be saved. Somebody say, despise not prophesy. Hallelujah. Now notice this. Hallelujah. Amen. It says, prove all things. We're going to keep preaching because it still works. We're going to keep rejoicing because it still works. Amen. Hallelujah. These things are proven. We're going to pray and we're going to fast because they still work. We're, got, we're going to preach the gospel because it still works. It works on red, black, white, Vietnamese, Malaysian, Amen. Whoever you preach the gospel to, it's a timeless gospel. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. He could have said in parentheses, because it still works. Come on. There's got to be a transfer of power from God to your life, and it's in the gospel. It's the goodness of God that leads you to repentance, because repentance still works. Repentance and turning your back on an old life of dead works still pleases God. Baptism in Jesus' name. Why? Because the name still works. The name still casts out devils. The name of Jesus should seal every prayer on the lips of a saint of God. I say prove all that remains standing. Prove all things. I say prove. If you're in the church at any time at all, there needs to be some things in your life to say, this works, and it will always work. Come on, somebody. Amen. Hold up your hands to the Lord right now. Everybody say, prove all things. Now I want you to make a fist and close it around some things that you know hold fast what works. Hallelujah. These hands had to release some things that didn't bring happiness. These hands had to release some things, hallelujah, that brought us sorrow. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, come on. Amen. But when we're proving things that last and that are eternal, hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Prayer. Worship. Hallelujah. These things, I have proven these things. Hallelujah. These will still slay the giants in your valley. These will still, come on. God chose worship to defeat enemies. Hallelujah. Without the drawing of a sword. Sometimes the sword, hallelujah, was permitted. Hallelujah. Other times God said, I'm going to show you. Hallelujah. Because it's not you just praising me. It's angels that are praising me with you. Hallelujah. It's God himself inhabiting the praises of his people. Hallelujah. How about some of the weapons of our warfare are not. I said they're not carnal. But they're mighty through God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The most powerful things are the invisible things. Hallelujah. You can't see God, but you can see what His Word has created. If you look at yourself in the mirror, it's God that formed you. We, amen. David said, Hallelujah, we have not made. It is He that hath made us and not we ourselves. Come on. God created you to be inhabited. God created you for your hands, your feet. Hallelujah. To be consecrated to Him. Hallelujah. He wants to put in your hands, your possession, things that work. Things that are proven. Hallelujah. Going to church when you don't feel like it still works. Worshiping. Hallelujah. Amen. When you get a raise, praise Him. When you get fired, praise Him. Come on, Come on somebody. God's got something better. God is always 
got something in the future better for his people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Jesus Christ's name. Every hand raised to God right now. In Jesus' name. Man, these words of Paul, hallelujah, written in the Holy Ghost, one right after another. I believe as Paul penned them, these work. And God would say, hey, hallelujah, put this in there. Put this there. Put this there. Hallelujah. Amen. Emphasize preaching. Emphasize worship. Come on. Because these things, I don't, people are always looking for something new instead of for something that works. You can do what you want. I want to keep my gasoline or diesel truck in car. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Amen. I've watched batteries catch on fire. Come on, somebody. Batteries won't take you as far. People are trying to get, amen, a whole world to believe something that has not been proven or will not be proven. Come on, somebody. You cannot make a battery-powered truck that can do, amen, what a Cummins diesel can do. But here's all these people. This is new. Therefore, we're wiser than you. And it's true. Come on. And there are people, hallelujah, amen, amen, that are saying, amen, I'm going to stay with things that are proven. I'm going to stay with things that work. Come on, somebody. How many want to stay with the church? How many want to stay with everything that Jesus says? When he told them how to live, to go wash in the pool, they came for sin. It worked. Everything he told them to do, when they agreed with God, it worked. There was a healing. There was a cleansing. There, come on. There was revival. Come on. Let's lift our hands to the Lord right now. Hallelujah. Amen. If you want something that has been proven, Hallelujah. Altars still work. I said altars still work. Hallelujah. Baptismals, hallelujah, in Jesus' name, still work. Holy Ghost in filling still is the answer. Hallelujah. Of a lack of power in humanity's life. Do you want it this Sunday morning? Why don't you lift your hands to the Lord in this place? I'd like to open this altar. Hallelujah. Amen. If you're tired of things, hallelujah, that have left you defeated, this still works. I said this still works. Hallelujah. Amen. Am I preaching to somebody that wants something that can happen, hallelujah, in your life today? He can forgive you today. He can wash away your sins this morning. Hallelujah. He can give you power you've never tasted. You never dreamed possible. Hallelujah. Because he can do what he's done for everybody. Hallelujah. And they tell you, the Holy Ghost still works. The Holy Ghost still works. Holy Ghost is the answer. It's the power of God and the salvation. Jesus' name. Standing my ground. His word I believe The devil can't stop it Cause it's on its way Claiming my promise today Claiming my promise God has promised to me Stand in my ground His word I believe The devil can't stop it Cause it's on its way